and we will start. Okay, welcome everybody. If you do want to run off and get a pen and pad, please do right now, because if you haven't met me before, I give a lot of practical tips. I just believe that's what parents need. We don't have ideas falling from the sky. So don't ever beat yourself up around the bush and because you don't have, you know, think of a game or think of this idea because they won't fall from the sky. You need to listen to someone talk or read a book or chat to your friends. So I will give you as many practical tips you can wake up tomorrow and do. So go and grab a pen and pad, that's wonderful. So yes, I have got uh, seven books and uh, my children are 20 and 22. And uh, as we know, we have been in the global pandemic for a long time. So I am here while we do this final period to give you as many tips as I can to bring more joy into your homes with children because we all need it at the moment. Doesn't mean we can't have all the other emotions, but we all need a bit more joy. So tonight I'm gonna talk about, yes, we're at home, but how can we strengthen the connections together as a family at home? I'm gonna talk about I'm bored tips for children of all ages. And at the end, I'm gonna talk about some ideas for parenting calm. So that's what we're gonna do. On my book, Happy Child, Happy Home, which yes, is in all the libraries, I wrote an introduction, uh, a little kind of verse in the introduction. And I read this poem when I was traveling and I saw it over this cafe uh, table and I rang the cafe 15 years later and it was still there. Cause this, this poem actually really, really moved me, this verse. A hundred years from now, it will not matter what my bank balance was the sort of house I lived in or the kind of car I drove, but the world may be a different place because I was important to the life of a child. So it's a little inspirational quote, important to the life of a child. And I wanna talk about for the next hour, what is important to the life of children while we're still in lockdown, while we still have home periods, of course. And uh, every idea I'm gonna give you is free. It doesn't cost anything, doesn't take that much time. But this is what I believe is important for the life of the child now uh, to have good connections, good, good, uh, good play opportunities and I'm bored strategies and a level of uh, home calm. Now, as I said, it's, we've had a tight squeeze for a long time. There is no such thing as perfect parenting. You're here, which is fantastic. So don't worry about that. I'm just going to give you lots of ideas that are going to strengthen all those areas for you. Of course, what is important to the life of a child? I remember there's a movie called um, Life is Beautiful. It's terrible setting. It's in the, um, in the Nazi concentration camps. But the dad plays this amazing game with his son, a young son. And every day he says he's got to go on a huge hide and seek and hide as best he can and really, really hide. Uh, and then he would come and find him when he got back at night, of course. And so the boy just actually saw this whole experience as this one long game. So we do have to protect children from the stress and the adult stress. And we do need to make sure we've got these family games at home, which bring fun, uh, as Barbara said in the beginning. So we are having more time at home and we're not rushing out of doors, which can be a good thing because those things can be stressful. So I'm gonna give you ideas for your daily routine that we all do, which are gonna bring connection games and fun together first. So I wanna talk about, you know, um, really in the morning, that we do really need to greet children with warmth and we need to greet them with love. I know we might be going, oh, another day, how am I gonna get through this? But it's really good to observe your children, okay? I, I find a lot of parenting is observation. Like we're always wanting to jump in, do this, the other. But it's really about observation. Observe their skin pallor, observe their sparkly eyes hear a giggle, particularly in that first seven years. A giggle is like gold, right? It's just an amazing sound. It's saying they're having fun, they've got joy. And especially with younger children, listen for that word more, right? If they go more, then you are on to a good thing, yeah? And with older children, look at them, look at their body, how they walk, how they move, their skin pallor again, of course. 
uh, their face and you all the ideas you can try and when you see these signs and the more or a smile you know this is what you're going to do uh, for your children so really do start observing now in the morning I'll give you some tips that we can be met with warmth there's a there's an Aesop's fable called the north wind and the sun so there's a man with a raincoat and they take a bet to take the man's raincoat off and the wind blows and blows and the man just does the does the uh, tie up and and the belt up and the raincoat's actually on further but the sun shines and the raincoat comes off and that's what a really good little story for parenting we do really have to uh, shine like the sun because we're really influencing our child's world in a sense with our mood so now we're a little bit slower. Your young children are going to be climbing in bed with you. They're, the first thing they want to do is, is get into bed. Please don't feel touched out, all right? It's an extremely special stage, that first seven years. Sometimes till nine they want touch or a little earlier. And they really actually need touch. They know exactly what they need, okay? Because touch for children is mega healthy for them. All right, it really is. And so we, there's so many scientific studies on touch. So one of the most famous one is the um, Kangaroo Project by John Chilton Pierce. So he took babies who were premature and he put one in an incubator and would do the hand. And the other one, you could take them out and wear them skin to skin in a pouch, which he called the Kangaroo Project. And the babies that were held skin to skin grew quicker, were healthier, and went home earlier. And so the scientists put it down to touch. Now, young children know that they need to be touched. So they hold your hand, get in your bed, climb in your bath, come in the toilet. Please don't feel touched out because it's really important for them, for their brain, for their development. But also they, they, that's going to go. They're going to go in a new stage. Anyone there with 10 year olds, 12 year olds older they, they're not going to want this at all anymore and if you've really made the most of it it's really okay when they move past and grow up so I want you to think of some fun touch games with your younger children I've got this tip and it's called fill the love tank so what you do is when you see them in the morning or they get in bed give them a really big squeeze and say I'm filling you full of love for the whole day I'm filling your love tank. Tell me when it's full. And I don't want you to think of the washing up and what you've got to do and this, that, and the other. I just want you to think of the child and I'm filling your love tank. Tell me when it's full right up. Usually it's around three seconds if we're really focusing on the child. If you've got a family, please fill the family love tank up. Come on, family, let's all get together. Come on, family morning hug, family morning hug. Just try it. It makes you feel like uh, happier yourself when it's happening. I had a dad say to me that he was working from a home office and his three and a half year old was so upset that he was there but wouldn't come out. So he started filling the love tank and he'd say, is it overflowing? Is it overflowing? And she'd say, yes. And he'd go, go and give the overflowing love to your brother. And she would. Can you believe that? Did it cost anything? No. Did it take much time? No, about three to five seconds. Was it important to the life of a child that day? It actually was. So I've had stories from older children. I've had a mum email me saying, God, my, my nine-year-old said, oh, my love tank's about half full. So I actually verbalised, you know, that she needed a bit more loving. And I had another parent say that their 10-year-old had turned around and said, how's your love tank today, mum? which is very profound. So you might want to play the game of fill your love tank. With younger children, you might want to do Eskimo noses. Let's warm the tips of our noses up. How butterflies uh, land on che cheeks would be, uh, would be wonderful uh, in that way. Please take time to listen to each other's heartbeats. So put your head on where their heartbeat is. They can put their head on, on where our heartbeat is. Just be, some beautiful touch games in the morning. With older children, you can do a touch game, which is just, I love you. And you can give their hand three squeezes. Yeah, when they're not wanting to be so cuddly, cuddly. I love you, three squeezes. Again, I've had a mum with a nine-year-old boy go, oh, he just gave me three squeezes when I was reading a story to him this afternoon. So they were playing the game back. I had a mum get emotional saying, 
my daughter gave this really long squeeze at the end. So it was, I love you. And then really long squeeze. And I said, what's a long squeeze? And she said, forever. So these are priceless three second games. And because we're at home all together and we're gonna have some moments because we're all in tight spaces, we need to make sure we have strong connection games, which we play at bedtime, we play in the morning and other times. So have a think of some of those. When older children don't really want to be hugged anymore and whatever, just use warmth. You know, I've got one son and one daughter. So my favorite daughter's here today. How's my favorite daughter? They always roll their eyes. You've only got one daughter. But when she first got a phone, <coughs> Oh, if someone's got their mic on, if you could just double check your mics, that would be fantastic, please. And just mute yourself. When she got her first phone, then um, then she wrote into you know the my, our phones your favorite daughter as the title. If we get cards given to us, it's always your favorite daughter. So I have my number one son and my number one daughter. But just have some warmth. We just need to start with some warmth. I still have warmth when I meet my 20 and 22 year old. Uh, it's just in my consciousness now to, to start in that way. But when they're young, really do enjoy playing some of those touch games. Observe their face while you're playing the touch games. If they giggle or smile, you know you're onto the right one. If you hear more, that's their one. So that's a little bit about morning greetings. Now, while we're at home together as families, we are gonna eat a lot at home, aren't we? We're going to have breakfast, morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea, dinner. And again, the meal timetable is really a time to strengthen your connections as a family. And maybe you would have been busy before having to be home all the time. And they are really, really important. Harvard University knows how important meal timetables are. So this is my book for middle years children, growing children, thriving children, raising seven to 12 year olds with confidence and awareness. So Harvard University has, um, they studied the family dinner table for 15 years. Over the past 15 years, research has shown what parents have known for a long time. Sharing a fun family meal is good for the spirit, brain and health of all family members. Recent studies link regular family meals with higher academic achievement, resilience and self-esteem. Additionally, family meals are linked to lower rates of substance abuse and depression later in life. The reason being is because you are belonging together as a family. Now, there are three fundamental human needs. Food, lucky we have it. Shelter, lucky we have it. And most people don't realize the third fundamental need, which is to belong. We are tribal type people. We don't go and live in the woods by ourselves. So our family is really where we belong. And the meal timetables is really that place, which is what Harvard University is saying. So let's uh, do eat together. So let's even think about breakfast. Please, if you've got younger children who are imaginative, so that's children up to seven, use imaginative language. So say, so really, who in the house has some big, strong hands? I could really, really do with some big, strong hands. They're going to come with their big, strong hands. All meal preparation is a great time to involve children if we're not in a rush so much anymore and to slow down. I had one mum say, I had no idea how much my three-year-old uh, wanted, like to scoop out the, they made porridge, porridge into the uh, pots. But often, often you can say, I need a breakfast chef. Any breakfast chefs in the house? Do you know chefs always wear a tea towel over the over the shoulder like that? There, there's your tea towel. You're definitely a chef now. Big strong hands. You can open a breakfast cafe. You know Australians eat breakfast out a lot. Children actually like laying the table. All right, but you've got to use the right words. Is the breakfast cafe open yet? Is it open yet? I think we need some waiters to lay the table for the cafe to open. Let me know when it's open. Um, if you've got older children in that, you know, that really like cooking, which happens often 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, they can write a breakfast menu out or you could try some different things for breakfast, of course. And please make pancakes on the weekend and then children will have a pretend pad and be a waiter and take the topping menus down. 
and our older children will cook the pancakes, of course. Maybe you might want to start breakfast with like a fruit platter on the table with you all too, whether you've got blueberries, bananas, apple slices, and you can turn that into a smiley face in three seconds with a banana smile and blueberry eyes, and strawberry hair, that's it, you're done. Um, so you can do uh, that kind of sharing. So I want you to think about involving children, all right? But make it playful and playful language when they're younger, uh, they'll really want to. And older ones really like the responsibility of opening up a cafe, seeing if they can find some new recipes and uh, we're gonna eat together a, a lot in that sense. Um, we've got morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea. Do sit down together, you know, if you can. I've been talking about, you can't invite people over because we're not allowed. Go and get your platters, you know, the platters that you usually do your, your, your nice socializing and start having some family, what we call happy plates or sharing plates. Now you're gonna get so many more vegetables in children. You can have cheese slices, nuts, whatever protein is. But the idea is you chop up all the raw veggies and the cheese slices. And again, you can make it into a, a, a smiley face. If you go online tonight, you can order them quite quickly, get what you call crocodile tongs, half tong, miniature tongs. Children like that, you can, the crocodile can pick. But everyone shares from a middle, it's a very belonging type thing, yeah? And you'll find if you have that for morning tea, uh, you're gonna eat raw veggies and eat this, that and the other, and you can have other things too, and rice wheels or whatever you have. Uh, but you sit down and you can call it a happy plate, uh, a, a piggy plate, a sharing plate and you can all be there together. Maybe you're gonna open up a bit of a bakery for morning tea. Please do some more baking because children just love it, you know? So maybe you're gonna try doing different muffins and you can open up the bakery and come and buy your muffins. Maybe you're gonna open up a bliss ball shop and make your bliss balls, but now's the time, all right? Now's the time. Older children will look up recipes uh, and want to open their cafe, will want to open their bakery, will want to open their, uh, you know, shop and, and younger children would like to help in any way at all. Do get your picnic rug from where it is in the garage and have picnic morning teas. Children like to just have a picnic morning tea. Children like peppermint tea, like herbal tea. If you, if you have a teapot anywhere, young children love that. Just do half water and half tea, have a little picnic with uh, from your bakery and things. And at lunch again, you can open a toasted sandwich shop. Is the cafe ready for the lunchtime people? Can we open it? Is it laid, you know? Um, do, I mean, I know it's hard, but do get some flowers and put it on your dining room table, okay? Because we need to make a really nice space at home for us because we're at home so much. Now, there's been scientific studies, again, that a single potted plant, so a single potted plant in a hospital uh, in room, obviously, in an office, in, in, a, in, a, in a room, actually changes the emotional well-being of the people in the room. So, you know, ha make a little, make it nice, your dining table, yeah? Do, do lay it, do have, a, do have flowers on it. Consider actually getting a candle. Now, I know this might go really loo, but children love candles. The reason they like candle birthdays and birthday cakes is not because of the cake, it's because of the candles on the cake. <laughs> so you can actually light a candle uh, for your dinner, and uh, have a little snuffer that you put out and that it represents warmth and light and children love it. They love it. We always used to lay the table, have some flowers, have candle. And uh, my son, even when he was old, he would light it when he was older and set it all out. And, and I was thinking, go on his first date, if he was cooking at home, they'd think, wow, he's gone over the top. That's just how we ate for a while. <laughs> Cause it was fun, we can do that. Now children do, you can play some little games at the meal time tables to talk and say thank you. And this is what Harvard University is talking about. They're not talking about just sitting and eating together. We need to do that. Please put your phone up high, don't look at it, make it time. But they're talking about actually communi communicating together as a family. So 
It's actually really nice if you've got young children to do this little holding hands game because when you do it, you create a ring, you create a circle, and that means you all belong and that feels good. So there's no, no one's filming you, just try it. Watch children, but you can do hands together and then hands apart. So you hold hands, hands together, hands apart, so you hold hands, hands together, hands apart, so you hold hands. Now we may start. And with younger children, you can do a little thank you game. Thank you to the farmer that planted the carrot that's on our happy plate. Thank you, the farmer that planted the wheat that's our bread. Thank you to the cow that gave the milk that's the cheese. Jamie Oliver will be very happy with you that they know. But oxytocins are raised by gratitude. So a little gratitude game uh, can be quite fun. At the end, you can say thank you to our friends, our family and our food or something like that. Um, and the circle of hands is actually really nice. I had a, I had um, different people talk about uh, dinner times and it was really funny because I had a friend that was a, a yoga teacher and she, she and her husband and one child who was nine and they used to always do these, this om. They used to go om and all three of them would om and make this lovely sound. And he, and I hadn't heard of that before, but that's what they did in their family. And he had two teenage boys that lived in England and they came over to stay and they were 13 and 15. And so they held hands and they did this on and the boys were like. <laughs> and she thought, oh, this is just too uncomfortable. I, we won't do it tomorrow. So anyway, so the next night they sat there, she put the dinner on the table. She said, all right, everyone eat. And the 13 year old said, aren't we going to rom? <laughs> so actually children like some little uh, games. They like things that, that you do each night at the dinner table. So the evening dinner table is a time that we can uh, play some little chatting games, all right? So if you've got really young children under five, you can do little gratitude games. But if you've got a five-year-old or over, you can do some chatting games. And chatting games really are about finding out about each other's day. So you can do the family weather report, which basically is ding, 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 family weather report. My weather was sunny. It was really sunny because I walked the dog. It was lovely on the beach. And, and you just say what was nice about your day. Everyone can say what was sunny. Sometimes or there was a few clouds came over, but it was okay. This happened or it might rain. Um, and you can tell it by the weather report. Some people say their day, but if you're the adult and you go first, children will follow. If you just say, what did you do to get nothing, nothing, but you have to, if there's another adult there, they'll do the game and then the children will follow. There's a, a rose game where the stem is something I learned today. Oh, what did I learn? I learned this today. The flower is something I enjoyed and the prickle I didn't like or was funny. But you're in, you're not seeing many people, all right? So it's really good. Some people say it's marriage counseling too, because you start sharing your date. Now, at the beginning of lockdown, I wrote a book called Happy Families Table Talk. I have to make sure it's in the libraries too. 111 fun questions, because I knew that people needed things at home. So there's 111 fun questions. And the amount of people that tell me, they absolutely love this book. Their family loves this book, five-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 13-year-olds. So you ask a question and you put a bookmark and everybody answers. Now, when I was writing this book, I asked my dad, who was 82 questions, and I found things out about him I never even knew. I've had partners say they have date night on Friday nights and they do questions and find things out. I have people FaceTime, nannies, and they go, I really love waiting from the FaceTime and answering the question. And uh, everyone hears about each other. And children particularly like it because they get to say, be a bit unique and give their answer. So I wrote that because I knew how important the dinner table was. You can get them from happychildhappyhome.com, which is my website. I'll type it in at the end, happychildhappyhome.com. So I'm just wanting you to actually cultivate these uh, family meal times with a bit of fun. Uh, with a bit of connection, uh, because it really does create a feeling of belonging with your with your platters uh, on the table, with maybe a bit of gratitude uh, and some chatting games at dinner, maybe some carpet picnics. Please open up the cafe 
get the older children to design a menu, what they're going to cook and cook. If you've got older children, they have a designated night of the week. They can be the, the chef, of course, and younger children, they just want to help. Just tell them they're a chef or the waitress and they're opening uh, opening up the cafe. I, had, I gave this talk and a mum emailed me the next day and said, you know, I knew dinner times were important, but I, everything had just got gone by the wayside with with just all being home and and I did it and my daughter who was seven wrote name tags out for people and she uh, did the table and she said can we do this tomorrow night mom because it was actually fun we forget that uh, children enjoy that sort of thing so that's a little bit about eating together do um have some sort of rest in the afternoon. I'm just going to give you a couple more tips for connection as a family each day. And then we'll go on to our old I'm bored play tips. But you know, you've got all the people in the room that have told me ages, you've got toddlers and young children and, uh, and five year olds, seven year olds, even nine year olds, everyone needs a bit of a kind of a, a rest in the afternoon. So the moods are okay around tea time. If you say to a child, do you want to rest? They're going to say no, all right? If you ask any yes, no question to a child, they're going to say no. So it's the parents that really hold uh, this, 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 or children. So do, if you've got young children, again, throw a sheet over the dining room table, all right? I absolutely love table cubbies. If you just go in the cupboard and you get lots of sheets and you can even move the chairs away from the table a little bit, put the sheet over it, put the sheet over the chairs, put a blanket underneath, put cushions underneath, and you make this wonderful cubby that you can go in in the afternoon. And um, what you can do is you can put books in there and you can open the library for everyone to go and visit the library with books. It has been scientifically proven again that a human voice reading to a child slows their heart rate and their pulse. It's been proven that if you go in a room and you take the curves and the edges off the walls so they're curved, the people that sit in it, they lower their pulse and heart rate. So being in a cubby, and reading will be one of the most therapeutic things you can stop and do together in the afternoon. You could open it up as a little massage shop and have some hand cream or some massages there. I'm really into reading to children, okay? Um, of course, we're giving a library talk, but Happy Child, Happy Home has all the chapter books to read to four, five, six, and seven-year-olds, okay? Uh, and you can see if they're in the library, Teddy Robinson, Millie Molly Mandy, when the, some of the Edie Blyton comes in. The children's chapter books, that, that, these are books without pictures and the story begins and ends as a chapter and there's one theme and you can snuggle. When children are after seven, then the chapter book tends to be where the story continues. You've got to remember the day before to keep the story going. And they're all the classic movies are chapter books and they're brilliant they're better than the movie of course they always are uh you know so Stuart Little and uh, and uh, Charlie the Chocolate Factory I don't know who enjoys it more so do have a little breathe in and uh and have some chapter books together and sometimes with older children we just have something called island time all right we, well, let's all just have island time and if you give them a picnic blanket or a blanket each or a sheet they can lie down their island have a snack and a drink get their books get their things every because we're on top of each other we're at home we all need a bit of island time i had a mum message me and say I had island time in the morning and it was really good. I could just tell things were getting a bit strained and we just had island time. Who doesn't want to go and live on their island? It's a, a really nice thing to do. So do have that cubby and uh, open the library. Now, someone said to me, Lou, my children love cubbies, but taking the cubby down is really hard and we need the dining room table. Here's a can I, so I made up some, some cubby games with the sheets once you take the cubby down. Do lie children on the floor. If there's an older child that will help you or another partner, you can hold the ends of the sheets and bring it up and down like a parachute on their nose and your faces and they think that's really funny. You can actually fold the sheet and get the child to lie in the middle and hold on and pick it up and just swing them gently. You can, if you've got floorboards or tiles, get them to sit on the sheet 
uh, when it's folded up and they pull it and you take them for a ride. And so again, observe your children. Are they snuggling into you? Do they, does their breathing, do they, ah, do they get a little rosier cheeks? Uh, you know, are they saying more to the next chapter or the game? Everything I'm telling you is free. Everything I'm telling you will fit into your daily uh, routine. Was it important to the life of a child? Did it bring some fun connection? Yes. So do have a think about some of those um, rest time games. If you've got older children too, and younger children, I even did this for my 20 year old the other day, is to create some foot baths where you get a nice plant container and you put warm water in there or a washing up bowl or something. And you can put your feet in there. If you've got any marbles anywhere, get put them in the bottom and you roll your marbles and you have a pampering session. Who doesn't want pampering sessions? So we can do that in a cubby too uh, with your pampering things. You're going to be just as uh, filled up as your children with lovely energy. Now, the last thing about staying connected is bedtimes, of course. And we really do need to create, you know, 20 minutes bedtime of, of what I call loving and touch when they're older and I'll give you games for when they're when they're younger and I'll give you games when they're older at home because again if we start the day the right way up and then the day the right way up somehow the day stays the right way up so bedtimes are an important time too so with younger children again who are still in the imaginative phase do take them to the bathroom in a fun way I mean children love going on your shoulders and the planes going back to the airport. Just say, climb up on board the plane. And it doesn't have to be really exciting. You can say the wheels are coming down, they're touching down, it's a gentle landing, it's a soft landing in the airport. You could um, give a piggyback ride. I, children love standing on your feet. So what you do is they stand on your feet and they hold on and you walk. And so you can dance with them standing on your feet or I call it giant steps to the bathroom. If you've got two children, you might have to take it in turns or two parents at home and there's two children, they can go for a ride. I had this dad say, I'm a terrible parent. And I said, I'm sure you're not. And he said, I am because I'm a doctor and I leave. I drop them to school, but I don't get into right on that bedtime. I don't have dinner and all these things. And I said, well, that three and a half year old, you're going to take her to bed as an aeroplane ride every night and it will count. It will be enough. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yes, it will. And that nine year old, you're going to drive to the car. This is actually out of lockdown. You're going to go to the car to take to school. You're passing a basketball hoop. So you can play three minutes of basketball together every morning and it will count. It's because you do it each day. When you do it each day, it creates trust and reliability and security and connection and love. So again, watch children when they say more, when they giggle. That's what, you can do that game for five years and we'll be more than happy about it. I had a granddad that said, they would do motorbikes, which they would pretend to get on motorbikes and then turn it on, let go of the clutch, kick the gear, and then they would drive their motorbikes, obviously, to the bedroom. If you've heard me speak before ever, children up to seven, even nine, we have to clean their teeth and help them. They just suck it off. So the toothpaste off the front, you can play teethy towels, which is this tooth at porridge, this tooth helped to open the cafe, this tooth uh, was playing with the blocks, this tooth went for a bike ride, this tooth, and you tell a story about the day for each tooth and it is connecting and fun to clean teeth. And again, at bedtime, we do need to bring in some touch. I would just sing all the people that love my child and I would rub their head like this while singing all the people that loved my child, which was, uh, which was um, you know, you hear this out breath. <sighs> so do have, try what your child likes for touch. Do they love the head? Do they like the hand? Happy Child, Happy Home has this little poem in it that, talk, that uh, is really lovely at bedtime where it just says, um, just find it for you, a star for you to wish on a sun so warm and bright, a moon for you to sleep on happy dreams, a kiss good night, and you draw the different star, moon and sun on them. But they bedtime routines are really, really uh, special rather than it's late, go to bed, you know, quit. We need to bring some sort of um, warmth and loving and touch 
do do the I love you, do feel their love tank so it's filled all the way through to the morning. Do tell them that, you know, that sleep is like super fuel for them. You know, racing cars, they have super fuel, not ordinary petrol. And our sleep is super fuel for our body. And we can say that to them. If they're older, try giving, say, ask them if they want a pizza, if they want to be pizza, if they want a pizza dough massage. Because sometimes they don't want the soft massages, but a pizza dough massage is you need the bread, you chop the tomatoes, you sprinkle on the cheese, you spread on the sauce. And you can see if they say more or no. Often between seven and nine, they don't want this touch uh, singing to them anymore. And it's time to chat. Yeah. So you've still got an opportunity. Don't miss out on opportunities because then the teens will come and it's just a little grunt to say goodnight. All right. So you do when they're younger need to touch them. They don't know you can't sing. Uh, play a torch game, look for to toys to say goodnight to uh, in that way. Have these uh, lovely rhythms. And the this middle years, you can have little chats. You can say, all right, you, your turn to think of a topic tonight that we can chat about. Oh, my turn to think of a topic that we can chat about. My husband would always chat to our, our children in the middle years and they can chat. I mean, my son's a businessman now, he's 22, but he knows how to chat to anyone. He knows how to have a kind of conversations where you both share a part of it. You could do a little gratitude diary. Please whisper to children, thank you for laying the table today. It really helped with our, with our cafe. Thank you. Just find something to whisper and thank them for or that you're really happy to spend the day with them or just, just find something to whisper to them. Uh, I love you because again, we wanna end uh, the day with warmth in that sense. So that's a little bit about bringing connection into your day. I'm hoping that you've written things down. You don't have to do every one of them. You might have had a light bulb moment and, uh, and you can do that. I want to talk about some play ideas for you now so that um, you're going to be at home all the time. So we need play ideas. So again, I'll talk about play ideas with younger children to seven or nine. And then I'll talk about play ideas for older children uh, and that we can do. So um, we do need to be inside and outside. Moods change totally outside. There's a lot of, again, scientific studies. Last Child in the Woods, Nature Deficit Disorder. It's about just going outdoors, yeah? And so we need to make sure we balance that. But here's some ideas for young children. Please do include them. Now you're at home a lot and you can be a bit slower. Young children to seven with all your chores, but just use imaginative language. I really need a road sweeper. Anyone, is there any road sweepers here? Really need a laundry person. Do you know how much young children just like feeding the washing machine dirty clothes? What to do is feed the washing machine dirty clothes. Uh, they want to eat it. I need a chef in the kitchen. I need a post person. Can we check the mailbox? Can we go down? Just include them, all right? Because they have this absolute desire to imitate a human being. So a lot of people don't realize that children, they don't just develop their brain because they've got older. They actually learn everything through imitation. So there was a a lady that was abandoned in as a toddler, it was in Alaska or Russia on a frontier somewhere. And she was, she grew up with a pack of wolves. It's a true story. It was on 60 Minutes about 15 years ago. The most amazing television I've ever seen because when you saw this person like a human, but they were on all fours and then the presenter walking next to them and the carer. And because she hadn't been role modeled walking, she didn't walk. Because she hadn't been role modeled talking, she didn't talk. In fact, she had longer arms, longer fangs, ate raw meat, ran fast on all fours because that's what she imitated. So your young children want to imitate you and tasks become their play, all right? They seriously become their play. So just use playful language. I often say that washing basket has all early childhood skills in it. Where's the other blue sock? Where's, where's the, where's how many Big Bear t-shirts do we have? Having little, it has color, number, shape. 
and then the laundry person can help take it back, uh, of course. So, but strictly cooking, as I've told you before, we really need to do in, in, in um, do include them. These big cubbies that I've been saying about making with the sheets on the dining room table and chairs, turn them into places because they're not going out as much. To put the dolls in there and turn it into a hospital, the teddies and a vet. Put your tins from the cupboard in there and turn it into a shop. Come and buy things from the library. I said you can turn it into with books uh, and fun places in their cubbies. You can make uh, little, little homes for them in that way. We do need to be moving. So do have that morning walk and you can play games on walks and you can so easily play counting cars. Uh, in the sense of how many how you you're going to count red cars and I'm going to count blue cars. Uh, Said so is the red or the blue going to win? Um, sometimes you can just pick three things. Can we spot a dog, a man in a hat, and a pink car on our walk today? Remember those three things, um, and look for the things while while you're having your walk in your morning walks to together in that sense. I have talked about island time with you uh, before too. You can play movement games inside by just, if you've got any paper plates or whatever, put them on the floor in there, stepping stones. If you've got any chalk, when you go to, go to the supermarket tomorrow, please get chalk, all right? You need to draw a hopscotch if you've got any pavement at all for children from five, six, seven, eight, nine. So look up how to do a hopscotch, one, two, three, four, five, six and you just need one pebble or stone and you can play hopscotch. Please draw chalk lines on the floor and they can be balancing beams or tight ropes for them to walk on. If you have got rope in your garage for towing or whatever, put light on the floor and it's a tight rope for them to balance on back and forwards because parks have opened again now, but they're not really exploring and running uh, and being outside and all that sort of thing. When the hardware stores open, just buy some planks, $10 plank basket, put them behind your sofa. Just putting a plank out can be the railway station, it can be the boat launch pad, it can be the balancing beam, all those sorts of things uh, there. So do, with younger children, do do big um, play in the sense that you just put some chairs out and uh, all you need is some, please go upstairs and get, or any old things from your cupboards like hats and bags and scarves because they just like dressing up with it, uh, doing their roles. And you can create boats by turning a little table upside down. You can create trains by uh, having a laundry basket on the front there uh, with your chairs. If you keep any tickets or bits of paper or recycled pads, um, they can play away bigger play indoors too. Please get your tent and put it up inside, yeah? That, please get a sheet and just put it on your washing line like that and put two heavy things. They've got a tent out there so easily um, too for you uh, to have their own little worlds and play. That's a little bit about younger children to create big play, uh, to, create, um, to create roles as play, as I've said, to create cubby play. Now with older children, they do need to move too. If you get some ping pong balls, you can literally play table tennis with your hand on a table. If you go online tonight, you can usually buy these table tennis sets where you just have a, a net that expands and goes on the table and a bat and ball. So you can do it on your dining room table. If you've got tape or chalk uh, you, inside, you can tape out if you've got tiles, a big square and then a cross in the middle. So you end up with four squares. It's a game called four square. And all you need is a rubber ball that's like $5 and they play tennis, but it's with their hand on the four square. Do do hopscotch. If you've got that rope, please skip with children. So you just tie the end of the rope to a door handle. If they're five and over, nine and 10, they go over the sea, over the waves, through the tunnel and then they can come in and then you can start skipping and jumping uh, will be absolutely wonderful for older children uh, to have more movement games. If they're really older, they wanna do bike ramps and, and courses and uh, 
and things like that. Younger children like doing horse jumps just by putting brooms on the floor and they jump over them because we do need to be moving as well as our as well as our um, we need to be moving uh, as well as all the time at home we need to be moving our bodies in that way do with older children make a jar so I want you to think of all the things they could possibly do now they'll be endless maybe they can think of it too uh, you know, make a card, look up a recipe, build with Lego, pat the dog, teach the dog a new trick. Like, just think of everything they can possibly do. Write it on slip, spits, little bits of paper and put it in a jar. And when they're bored, the jar will tell them what to do next. So they do a lucky dip out of the jar. I had a mum say, the jar saved my life. They're on the third lucky dip and they're going off to do it. Um, you might even have a a, a sand timer that you can turn over um, but a lucky dip jar is really really wonderful for them they do need to you know have some new projects if you can you know maybe you do origami projects uh, that's quite amazing maybe you learn some magic tricks maybe you learn some card tricks uh, something that they can look forward to the next day because they'll, they'll get into something it will last for a while and that's where Google is. You can even learn how to draw horses, you know, if you just uh, uh, Google that. You can use, it doesn't always have to be games that are completely repetitive. You can use it to learn magic tricks and learn how to do origami and, and uh, do all these types of things. So think about a project that they they might want to do that. They really do need board games and games. I mean, I'm playing a lot with my daughter too, um, card games and board games. After nine, they find it a lot easier to do winning and losing, just a warning there. Uh, so you can have family card games uh, in that way. Do, I have talked about actually making notes and, and dropping and going and posting them like young children to a neighbor to make them smile or to a friend that you can walk to. If you're baking muffins or something, go and put it in a friend or a neighbor's letterbox. You can actually, children can actually make other people smile too. You can also make a jar at home about how to make people smile and what you could do to make them smile and put the ideas in there in the family and pick one out to add a little bit of happiness. I have got some um, games for you to play. You're gonna be on school holidays and you're, we're still gonna be in lockdown. So if you like social media, my social media is happy child, happy home. Right? Just look up happy child, happy home. My website is also happychildhappyhome.com. I give a free newsletter with ideas, but on my social media, I'm always putting in five minute videos. I'm always giving two minute tips. And so I did seven games to play at home uh, with your children that took nothing except what's there for children from five, four, five, all the way through to teens. Okay, so maybe after dinner, you just choose one of these games to play each night and you are going to have more fun and you're going to be more connected together. And my aim is that children actually look back on this time and have some fond memories of it. And actually we come out and yet we've actually developed some family memories together and some fun. So a very simple game is changes. All right. So changes is that a person stands there, they turn around three times and then they leave the room and they change something about their appearance. Now, when they're young, they take a shoe off or they take their T-shirt off. <laughs> it's very ob obvious. When they're older, it's a lot more subtle. And you might have to say, you have to do some guessing and say which part of the body's on. But everybody loves the game of changes. I had my, um, even my daughter played this in her 18th birthday in Zoom. Uh, they they uh, they they played uh, changes <laughs> on Zoom. So children like that. You can play a game called What's Missing on the Tray. So if you've got a tray, maybe you don't. You can do What's Missing on a big on your big platter plate. And you go in the kitchen. Someone goes in the kitchen and chooses. Like if it's young children, you just choose three objects, four objects, and you have a tea towel over the top. If it's teenagers, you could have twenty objects or 10 in the middle. And so everyone stares at the tray 
and then closes their eyes and the person who's chosen the object puts a tea towel over, takes one thing away and you've got to guess what's missing on the tray. Children like what's missing in the room or what's changed in the room. So everyone looks at a room and then goes out and someone takes something away or moves it and you've got to guess what's changed in the room. Uh, can be quite funny. Please play occupation charades. I had a dad say, I had no idea I needed, he had a seven year old, needed to laugh after dinner, after all this lockdown and we played animal charades. So you can write lots and lots of animals on slips of paper and someone chooses it and they have to act like the animal or they could have to act out what the occupation is and you've got to guess. Of course, we've got hide and seek to play it. Everyone likes hide and seek. Um, children love a game called warmer and colder. So you choose an object and you hide it and then people look for it and you say warmer or colder if they're getting warmer to it or further away. If there's more than one children, hide the same amount so that that they both have something to find. What is actually a really uh, funny game is uh, when you've got all those dress up things, old things like coats and hats and scarves and old shoes and bags and even gloves. And you get a dice from, from one of your board games and you throw the dice and you have to put on the amount of items that the dice says. So if you threw, throw two, you can put on a hat and a glove if you throw three. So you have three rounds of this and everyone ends up looking pretty funny. All these things will bring a bit of fun and make people laugh. So I'm hoping somewhere in that talk, I'm sure all of you have had a idea, something that you can bring tomorrow. I'm not telling you it's easy. I'm really not telling you it's easy. It's not easy. We've been in lockdown an extraordinary amount of time. I want everyone to pat themselves on the back. I'm not saying you can't have other emotions, of course, uh, but all the things I'm telling you are free. Uh, you can add them into your daily rhythms and they are gonna bring smiles to families. And we need a bit more of this uh, before, um, before it's all out. We only have about three minutes left of our talk. Um, I do want you to, just a couple of fun things to keep calm. And these are just fun things, all right? Um, but sometimes you can put a cross on your calendar and try and get the crosses further apart if you feel you're really kind of blowing up too much. Uh, tomorrow, I want you to try whispering, all right? It can be a lot more powerful rather than keep shouting across rooms and the children just you know end up blocking their ears or not hearing to actually go to a child tap them and whisper and say fewer words less words look after is a great word look after each other just whisper i want you to give it a go in fact sometimes it can help uh, a funny thing please do island time when everyone needs breathers um, we can play some breathing games too because we're all in a little bit in tight spaces. I always do smell the flower, blow out the candle, <sighs> smell the flower, blow out the candle uh, to do some breathing games or the breathing hat. <sighs> breathing hand. Just put your hand on a child's tummy, get their hand and put it on your tummy and say, can you blow the balloon up? Can you blow the, I'm blowing the balloon up in my tummy. Can you feel, feel it? Just do one deep breath and see if they can blow their balloon up. When you go, let's all take a deep breath. Their bodies will take a deep breath. You can um, get a jug, I'll end you with this. You can get a jug and you can draw an angry face and you can stick it on the jug and you can put it there somewhere. And when you're starting to feel angry, you can go, oh, I'm feeling angry. I'm gonna put it in the angry jug and go, ah. <laughs> and then go tip the anger outside. Like, of course, we, we, you know, there's a lot more to it than that. And children might be overwhelmed, tired, together. We, we need some other tips. But these are just some fun games to try and just be a little bit jokey about uh, uh, keeping some calm in the house where you can. It's like saying the opposite. Whatever you do, don't do that. Whatever you do, don't do that. Never want you to do that. Don't do that. Because uh, sometimes we need a, a little bit of humor here. I always say, as long as you don't go at, at to bed angry at your children and uh, they don't go to bed angry at you or siblings, then everything's okay. We can always make amends. So I'm going to end with this tip. 
making amends sometimes sorry is just sorry making amends is someone was happy and then they were sad we make amends and they're happy again make amends could be get a book get them a glass of water give them a special blanket give them a hug and we do need to have some making amends yes in our in our in our families uh, now because we're all in tight spaces and then it's a clean slate Sometimes we have to have siblings face each other. I don't like it when you, well, I was asking this. We definitely need some sibling turn-taking games. You need timers for that. Whoever wants to go first, you can use magic finger to choose if they run around the room, close your eyes. Closest to my finger goes first. So there's a few games to keep a bit of emotional calm. I do like sand timers too. Look up sand timers. I've got one here. Um, there we go. In that hour, I've tried to give you as many tips as I could muster. Please don't feel overwhelmed. Just choose the one that jumps out at you the most. Look down your list and, uh, and try some others. It's really nice for children to make cards while they're still at home because then they can have them ready for people's birthdays. This is a fun activity for children. So you make something that moves and you just put it on a, on a stick also from a walk. And when you have the piece of paper to cut the slip, you simply just bend it, snip in, and then you cut the snip there, and then it can move. So making these things ready. Fantastic. Thank you, Alice. If you have enjoyed my hour, that's fantastic. Thank you. If you want more and you do like reading, um, as I said, if you've got children from toddler to seven these are your two books all right so this is in three languages it's had five print runs this and each book has checklists at the end and so you can so easily just look at the checklist uh, each chapter and just go through the checklist but this is on family rhythms and play and storytelling and craft everything to give children a happy childhood and this book is on creative discipline so there are 10 chapters and half the book is every single scenario I have ever been asked. So people just use it as a little encyclopedia uh, to look up and find their ideas. If you have seven to 12 year olds, this book, it had to have a print run in six months, which I was very happy about. Growing Children, Thriving Children, Raising 7 to 12 Year Olds with Confidence and Awareness. It's what to know about the changes, what to do to stay connected, I'm bored and what to say with creative discipline and puberty. And of course I have Happy Family Table Talk. If you want to buy them from me in lockdown, you can. I have got them reduced and as many books, it doesn't matter, it's $4.95. You can do that from happychildhappyhome.com. You can buy them from Amazon, Booktopia and every single book site that you can imagine. I'm just gonna type in my website and do sign up to my newsletter because I'm always giving talks on Zoom now. I'm always giving workshops and you will hear anything that's going on with me. And I have many talks on many areas to help you and support you as much as I can. So just have a look at happychildhappyhome.com and you'll find out about my courses and, and uh, the newsletter will tell you anything that's happening. And I do do one-on-one -on -one consultations where you write down all your questions and I write notes and we Zoom together. Uh, if you ever felt you needed some support in the future, usually you only need one because I've made all these notes for you to help you. It's 95, but I've actually written notes and then we, we Zoom for an hour. So that's all on Happy Child, Happy Home. You can find it all there and look me up on social media and I'll keep giving you as many tips as I can muster. So, uh, yeah, we've come to the end of the talk. I'm happy if anyone has a burning question to hang around for five minutes. Does anyone have anything to ask or say or comment on? I haven't put you here so you can talk to me or you can type it. Uh, are you, yes, that's fine. Jess, are you going to type it or say it? Oh, I think I'll, I'll say it actually, switch on the camera. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, something you said very early was that when you hear the word more, that's always a good sign. Yes. Um, our problem is 
in the household tends to be that we get the word when the kids are having fun we get the word more and that's a sign that we cannot stop what we're doing or else it's going to lead to massive tantrums and usually parents just get exhausted by swinging or doing whatever it is so you know it's for us more is often a sign that yes true too but i mean you've got to want <laughs> that's really fulfilling their need i mean you know you you do so sometimes Rather than saying no, you can you, you just use something a little bit imaginative to, you know, if it's you can't do it anymore because you've got to get tea ready, then you just tell them, oh, I need, really need a chef. Let's get the let's get the tea towel to put it on your shoulders so to be a chef. Do you know what I mean? Like just see if you can involve them into whatever the next activity is in is in, in a fun way. Yeah. If you blanket just say no, they're gonna just have a tantrum. Um, if you actually can can tra transform it into what we call redirect into something else, or do tell them, you know, oh, come, on, come and rub mummy's arm. It's really sore. It needs to have a little rest. No nights before next time. Come and help me. I don't know what ages your children are. Yeah, but children mm -hmm. don't have adult brains. All right, they don't have logical thinking. They're not in our time frame. They don't know adult stress. Yeah, they got none of this in their brain. Yeah, so if we can just, uh, you know, actually be a little jokey, but show them, you know, come on, rub it, so sore, we'll do that swingy. Sometimes if you create rhythms, if they really love something, just try and create some rhythm about it, because then you can actually go, yeah, we, we're always going to do a walk with a swing after dinner. Yeah, it's coming. You know what I mean? In that yeah. sense. Yeah, but, you know, we're always going to do swings on walks. It's coming. Let's all eat up before I swing on our walk and put it into places where it's okay to do. Yes? But, I mean, we're not there to just to do that for our children over and over again. But it is a sign that, you know, that they enjoy that in a sense. Um, but it's like um, people often ask about playing with their children, becoming a five-year-old and being their play friend. It's not really our job to do that. It's our job to invite them into our chores to be really playful. Uh, but otherwise, often we have to just make a bridge to them a little bit, you know? Um, mm. I don't know how old your children are, but if they're playing something, you can say, oh, just tidy the shop up and I'm going to be back in a minute. Like We've got to stretch children sometimes, Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, nearly three and nearly five, so huh? yeah, <laughs> nearly three and nearly five. Just so. even swinging, just say, "Oh, just got my got a nun at my arm. It's a bit sore. Let's have a rest." But then, then you need to create a bridge, you know, to see what something else that they that that you know that they potentially could um, help you with or go to. But I need some strong hands myself now. Who has got strong hands mm. to come and help do this? Or you know what I mean? Does yeah. that help you? Yeah, thanks, Lou. It's a, it's a, just a dance between that, isn't it? It is indeed. But you know what I mean about giving, and sometimes even just one more, you know what I mean? Uh, okay, going to count to 10. We're going to do it mm. once more. I'm going to count to 10, and then we've got to rest the arms, yeah? Um, mm. They always want 11, or they always want the extra one, but it's giving them a little warning that it's finishing. Yeah, sand time is a fantastic. If you want to go online and get some sand time this tonight, because you can say we're going to do this game until the magic sand runs out, and then when the magic sand runs out, it means yeah, our tummies have had enough of spinning or our arms. Are, yeah, keep watching. Oh, it's run out. Yeah, it gives because they don't know time either. They don't know mm, what mm -mm. It's that sort of thing. Thank you. Yeah. Did anyone, thanks, I'll, have one, I'll have one more question and then we'll go because we have gone a little bit over. Has anyone got anything to ask? Say, quick question. Got to find the quick question. My kids ask for food all day. And then you've got to ask why. Uh, it is a bit similar to I'm bored, isn't it? So, you know, sometimes you can put out a, a bowl of fruit or things that they can come back and forward to. Yes. So that's just the picky blow that they can come and food to. But as long as you have set times for breakfast, morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea, tea, try and have set times to it so that they, they know it's coming. And um, 
Uh, you could have just a, a bowl that if they wanted something in between, uh, but normally it's not that long if you're gonna, if you're gonna, you know, two or three hours in between. Maybe get them some fun drink bottles because sometimes drinking helps with that. Yes. And, um, and yeah, maybe the um, board jar, I'm not sure how old they are, but the um, board jar uh, will help because maybe they just want comfort in that way. Yeah, thanks. And just joke, just go, there's no way a tummy needs any more. Really? Yeah. Uh, but sometimes just having a plate of something that they can come back and forward to if they are in between and just put carrot sticks on it, yeah? celery sticks, things like that. So they still feel a bit hurt um, and, uh, and make sure that when they are eating, they can eat what they want, much as they want. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. I'm so glad for the comments. Everyone's given some lovely comments that they've got some good ideas and so much. So anything that makes you have a little bit more fun in the next while until we're out of this, uh, lots of excellent ideas. Thank you, all really wonderful to hear those. Thank you, my pleasure. Come and find me again in those places that I said, happy child, happy home. My one eye, sole eye idea is just to give you lots of practical tips. And for me, it is about connecting uh, children having an environment to have fun and I do do creative discipline workshops and things like that so you can find me and uh, find out what I'm doing next if that interests you all good everybody yep have a good thank one. you very much Lou that no, was wonderful good I'll end the recording everyone and you will be sent to from Barbara and if you've got any friends that I could help or support just or family just forward it on to them we just need to help as many people and support them for this last bit yeah so sure we'll pop it up on our YouTube channel great no worries you can send the link okay then thanks thanks everyone. very much Lou thanks Lou okay bye, -bye. bye. thank you bye thank you bye.